Hey guys and welcome back. Today we're out in the greenhouse because the day has finally come. I'm moving out the first batch of fish and invertebrates. Now the first ones that I'm going to move out this season are ones that are a little bit more tolerant of shifts down into the 50s because as I look at our 10 day forecast there's still a few nights that are going to be quite chilly so I want to make sure that I'm choosing species that aren't just going to obviously struggle in those colder temperatures. So the tetras and things like that will have to come out later. But I have selected seven species to move out right off the bat and I'm excited to show you guys and get them in the tubs. Now today it's over 100 degrees in the greenhouse. You can see I have the doors propped open, all the roof panels are open and it is still warm. The top row of bins is hovering in the mid 80s and the bottom row is in the mid 70s. So it's a perfect time to move out fish as the tanks in the fish room are around those same levels. So I've collected groupings of each of the species I've selected. Um, when I can sex them, I've picked, made sure I had good numbers of males and females. And I've also grabbed some of the fry that were in the tanks to move out as well. So let's take a closer look and we'll talk a little bit more about who's going in what tub and why. Now the first species I've selected are these gold ring danios, or danio tin wine eye. And the reason I selected them is because they're very easy to breed. They're a really pretty fish, super active, cold tolerant, and really well suited for a low tech plant of the aquarium. And they're not exactly cheap. They're usually, I think, around five bucks a piece. So if they breed well for me outside, as most danio danios generally do, they'll be a great species to reproduce in number. Now there's also a couple Brevobora dorsia salata, the emerald eye rasboras in there, but I'm not entirely sure I have both, species, uh, both genders, so we're going to have to wait and see. Um, behind them are my Okefenokee sunfish. And I know that these guys... Now I know these guys are absolutely going to love it out here, especially the Daphnia that I've seeded in all the tubs. They're looking a little thin now because they weren't enjoying eating prepared or frozen foods, but they should fatten right up and start spawning. I can't wait to show you guys the colors they get. Next up we have our first invertebrate, which is just some cherry shrimp. I selected a nice range of males and females. I just took a simple scoop out of my cherry shrimp tank. It's about 20 shrimp and they should do really awesome as well. They'll also be useful for eating some of the algae that's collecting in the bins. I also selected some blue shrimp. Blue shrimp are always in demand. They're a bit more expensive and this is a really great line that's been going for quite some time that I recently supplemented with some more shrimp some, from some trusted friends in the hobby. Now again, I took a scoop, it's probably about 40 shrimp, I have a ton of these guys, um, and there's both solid dark blues and blue rillies in there, so it should be fun to see what we get this season. I also grabbed a group of my yellow shrimp. Yellow shrimp are one of my tried and true favorites, and I think this year I'm going to try shrimp in tanks with fish, but we'll have to see. Up next is my least killy group. I've showcased those to you guys a few weeks ago. Um, really fantastic little fish, super great for super teeny tanks, and one that I really would like to have a whole lot more of. So I grabbed a group of about 12 to move out, including some fry. And then the last fish that we're going to move out right now are our CPDs. Now, I had only saved about 10 of these, and I pulled about 60 out of their tank, so they're already spawning readily, which means they should do super awesome outside here in the tubs. So if you guys remember correctly, I've had all these tubs planted for quite a while now, so there's been plenty of time for different microorganisms to grow and the water to sort of season and even out. I've also added Daphnia to every single tub. Let's take a closer look so I can show you that. Now just under the surface of the water and above these little lily leaves, you can see a whole bunch of little dots scurrying about. And as we look around this entire tub, there are critters m teeming everywhere. I hope you guys can see this. Um, and this is really great because this is a wonderful first fry food. This is a wonderful adult fry food. And it just really is an easy, easy way to make sure all of your critters stay fed. Now I probably will occasionally supplement these bins just so that I can get a count of fish and check for fry. But for the most part, they are pretty self-sustaining because of this live food source. 
So what I have done so far is I simply brought the fish out here and I've let them just sort of acclimate to the environment out here. It's very hot and it's very humid. You can see everybody's super active. Um, because these bins were filled with my tap water, I don't really need to do any special acclimation. I'm simply going to dump them in. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now, because shrimp are more tolerant to colder temperatures, I'm going to be adding them to the bottom bins, which stay about 10 degrees colder than the upper bins. I just put the yellows in here, I'm going to put the blues in there, and the reds over there. Very simple. Blue's going in. Red's going in. Up next, we're going to add some fish. I'm going to add the pygmy sunfish into this first bin. It was the one that was established first, and it has the most live food. I really want these guys to do very well out here. And I know that they're going to appreciate these snacks right off the bat. Next to that, I'm going to put the CPDs. That's my thermometer falling down. And then next to that, I'm going to put the least killies. And then finally, and then finally in this last bin, I'm going to put my Danios. Now, because these bins are 60 gallons, there is more than enough room for the population to explode and I should have virtually no cycle with the plant mass and the dilution. Uh, generally speaking, this is a super easy process. I add the fish to the tubs, check in a few weeks, and there's already fry. And I'm really looking forward to getting the rest of the fish out here, finishing setting up my other tubs, watching my bog garden grow, and surprising you guys with that other bill. Um, I've got a couple weeks left yet before it'll be mainly updates, so stay tuned. Make sure you have that notification bell on so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And make sure you're following me on Instagram and my business Facebook where I provide additional content. As always, thank you guys for your support. Let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, and what species you're going to summer tub this year.